I considered I would have harnessed the spirits of the ancients by this time, but can't help but to compare to the ambitions of the House of Sather. The halls here winding, the screams of the undying are menacing. There is respite knowing a living prey will soon meet their end. The undying, though, hold no quarter. No pain, no life, no hurt, no sorrow, no joy, no hopes, no dreams, no aspirations. Born, detached, only antipathy towards any soul that does not remain in a dark stasis as they. Pure, unbound fear and abhorrence. As I walk these halls, the ubiquitous shrieking languish and wrench my soul asunder. For what lies ahead can only be a fiercer manifestation of what was left behind. The die has been cast, either I become a hallowing apparition myself or leave this place at any cost. Death or life would both be preferable to becoming one of these monstrosities. I have come too far, though, not to quench my curiosities, however. It's do or die time. The die has been cast. The ships have been burned. There's no other option as we make our final stretches to the east wing from south. This is Sarleon, and we are in the back reaches of Charassus Howling Stones for our last episode. So I found a way to get the map up. The map's right there. Yeah, I decided we'd take this back route to east, so I just got the map up there. We are pretty well just going straight through these narrow halls here. Fortunately, we get lucked out. That first stop area with the three dots was all undead. And there, probably can't see it because the map's in the way, but there's a bottomless feaster. So these areas are pretty dangerous. To fight in so well we're not going to be fighting we're going to be taking the espionage not the pacifist route but the espionage route we're going to get it through by any means necessary there's not a ton back here in this back wing now you see some names there with some highlights i just highlighted the main names that come through this area which are the chris crypt Excuse me, Crypt Excavator, Howling Spectre, and of course, Drusella Sather. So what I did there is I just sent a torpedo. I harm shield through. I use this technique quite a bit. And then I feign death up here. There's not, there's that one roamer that'll come up south to north. But that roamer is not going to be too much of an issue because it's got a long enough path time. It's not going to give us trouble. And even if we did encounter it, we can get it under control pretty easily. I think this is still considered the south wing. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but we're just above the middle section there. I feigned death about where the red dot is up by the top room. So, but I think this is still the south section technically. But number 12, there is a name. Now, if anybody knows, please comment. I would be interested to know, is that a south spawn name or is that an east spawn name? I'm very, very curious because I, I couldn't get a distinguishment. And obviously there wasn't a name up there, but maybe someday it could be worth just sitting back there and, well, sniping a single named every 20 minutes or so. Yeah, let me know if you, if anybody does have a clue in on that. I know myself and the community would be very appreciative for any information we can get. Um, I know quite a bit more about this zone when I started now than when I came in here, but there's still some things that I 
still don't know. But we had our panther step by. Now that room to the right of us was all undead, so I was able to just scurry past it. And this is just an elemental bone. Here's a false wall. Now we're going to be leaving those back stretches. And here we go. We've got the east wing for you right here. Now this is not looking good for us because not only do we got these four here, but we've also got a path that comes in and out of that door. And then two golems on the other side of that door. So this can be troublesome <laughs> to maneuver around and get everything pacified and such and so forth. But as I was sitting here thinking, how am I going to get past this foyer? Now at this point, a lot of you don't know, but I had about eight coffins that I stuck in the bank. And at that point I said, this is my limit. When I'm done with these coffins, I'm done with the zone for the time period. This crawl, I was, I had gone through all my coffins dealing with like, I think there was one summon I had to do two, one or two in West and all of the rest in South. So I found Lakos here and I attribute a lot of this to Lakos. I just, Rode his wave. I, I rode his coattail all the way to Drusella's room because without Lakos, I probably would have just stopped at this point and came back here another day. So if you're watching this, Lakos, Lakos, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Huge thanks to you. I really appreciated being able to follow you through here. Um, not only did you save me time, but you made this East Wing crawl possible so I can at least show my viewers what's going on here. Now before we get too far out of here, obviously wanted to come back and check this, but I had this confirmed by a viewer. Thank you very much for posting this. I want to say it's Pettit Boot. Let me know if I got that pronounced correctly or not. But this east door doesn't require a key actually. As you see me here, I'm in the corner of the foyer here. <clears throat> there you go. Just a free click. It opens up. So if you can levitate across that bridge without aggroing anything over here, you can actually get through the East wing fairly easy. And there's rarely bio golems over here. So your chances of being able to double invis, I've done it on my cleric where I just came over here. I forgot. I didn't need a key, but I got double invis and I got all the way to that room with the Garzacore quest, um, little painting with double invis. So you can navigate this zone, obviously check your, um, your invis and on every con, every mob is what I'm saying as you're going through, but you should be able to get through a lot of this area with double invis as long as you don't hit a boss or named or something. So there you go. I didn't, I wasn't able to crawl east 100% by myself, but y'all learned something, even though I'm following an enchanter. And I thank you very much for your viewers for bringing stuff up like that. Um, I'm really glad for this community, and that's what I want this to be about. I don't know everything, I know a good amount of information, but I'm still learning a lot. So if you have something to add or something I missed, please feel free to comment and share with the rest of the community. Up above, we've got the map, and I... <laughs> this came up, blurted earlier, but all the way to the bottom, you see those are the corridors that we had crawled through. Um, the foyer is the one all the way to the left with the four red dots. And then we're going to be jumping over here right after I invis versus undead. So Lakos was able to get all this pacified. So I'm just going to be following him. Make sure that the undead at least don't see me. Very scared. I, I told y'all I was very nervous doing this because if I die, I'm done. I don't have any coffins left. I got to go. I got to go get some, but this was my internal limit that Sorry, Lan, you're, you're, you're done with the zone. You're done crawling for the time being. You got to take a break until you can figure it out. But if you can get all in 
in undead in that foyer or get it cleared out. You can check. This actually is not a hard break. The mobs are evenly spaced out enough that I think you can single pull this Hamel skeleton. Uh, the Hella Spectre is right over there in the corner. And there is one path that goes up and down. I'm pretty sure that carpet is a trap or there's one just up ahead that's a trap. So be be very careful. This is where it gets a little bit tougher now that we're heading um, kind of more eastward. And then down there's, you know, there's a lot of golems in this area, high level, high level feasters as well. So I'm just following Lakos here, but yeah, I see right there. There's a path right there. He's, he's working on it. So yeah, after viewing this, I think it would be possible to break in here. Not that <laughs> I was wanting to do it at the time. Okay. So there's two pathers that come up. Work your magic, Lakos. East is a little bit different of wing. South was kind of nice because there's a lot of different spots where there's names. And outside, with exception to that one that we passed by in the kind of the outreached corridors, I, I'm not sure if that's east or south again, but here there's only two spots where there's a name that can spawn, which is really weird. You think east being the hardest, there would be the without any argument would be the best loot and also having more name spawn. No, there's just two. There's one in kind of this room that's up to the left of us, just up to the north, and one by the exit pad. The star at the most top, that is Drusella Sa Sa Sather, excuse me, Drusella Sather's which she only spawns every 24 hours. And if I didn't follow Lakos, my <laughs> crawling would have been done because this guy is 50 level 56. Pretty sure he sees through invis, maybe even invis versus undead. But this would have been really hard to get crawled past. Now that area back there, if you take that hall all the way and, and take it south, that's that room where the Garza core little paintings the what is it it's just a ground spawn on the table well it's a table spawn actually but that's where you gotta go so depending on your luck you might be able to double and viz just click through east and get through there now basically i'm just gonna wait lakos went ahead and what lakos was doing up here is he's wanting to sit and camp this Drusilla Sather area. So you might need the key to get in this door though. I'm not hundred percent sure. I can't remember. So just be aware, be, be prepared coming through here. You might need a rogue. No, on second thought, I'm pretty sure you don't. But anyway, Lakos is wanting to get over here to get an urn. So we met at prime perfect timing on that east wing and he's wanting to hold down this camp now if you want to get the drusella sather camp you got to get here before anybody else is on blue it's basically perma camp by a platforming crew um, they just have people here that sit and platform they got a whole crew for it so it's really hard to get up here unless you get here quite quite early and you're continually keeping the five spawns down in the room theoretically it can be done there's full four golems and then a little path here that goes around the room i think so it's been done not that it's a desirable not that it's very desirable to keep this room cleared for 8, 10, 12, 16 hours at a time. So, well, if you're parked in here and you do it on a quake, maybe you'll get lucky. But Yeah, anyway, this is, yeah, that was an introduction to Drusella Sather's room. 
This room, however, is not openable by any key that is obtained anywhere in Howling Stones. You have to have a rogue pick lock. Yep, so you have to have a rogue to get through here. But that hasn't stopped us from getting through doors before. So what I'm trying to do here is there's a path that goes back here and this unfortunately failed. The one mob in East that doesn't spawn that is a summonable range. Yeah, who would have guessed, right? But if it would have worked, the mob would have summoned us through the door, which unfortunately failed. It sure is a good thing we got some practice earlier on that south door. Since that, I took that mob buff off screen, that specter. We're just going to shrink down. Now, this is the full version of this, so you can see this from start to finish. Last time, I kind of had it cut. But I use two ant leg potions to shrink all the way down. Then I use my demi lich form. Now I'm j jimmied in the door a little bit. And as soon as I click the stocking probe, I send it and then I click it off and then walk through the door. Voila. And we are finally past all the doors we need to worry about that are locked or have some sort of strange mechanic. So there's your, there's another tip, trick and trick and tip, tips, tips and tricks. There, there we go. Tips and trick. There's another tip and trick that y'all get going through East to aid you. Yeah. I remember growing up, we had those gaming magazines growing up PSN and they always had the tips and tricks and we would go to the local convenience store because why buy them when you could just look through them and find the tips and tricks and then put it back down. So I remember I was reading one once and I was kind of hunched over and the lady scowled at me. This isn't the library. Either buy it or put it back. But here you can come and leer all you want. Feel free to leer, leer at my tips and tricks. I won't, I won't shoot you out of my store. I promise. So here's the last room we've got here. And it's that grand room on the, at the uh, right there, just north of the green X. Now we spent quite a lot of time just sitting here, plotting, planning, analyzing my plan of action. So what we have is we have four golems on the floor there. And then at the two watch posts, there's two undead. And then the howl, the howling specter or a howling specter is the roamer up there, which I'm pretty sure sees invis versus undead. So this would have been fine, but there just to our right there is the named mortiferous protector. It sees through standard invis. So I can't just casually invis past. I'm really having to think critically about what's going on here. While I was plotting and planning, a Helot Spectre had spawned. I tried to play around with it quite a bit. This was definitely, I would say this is definitely the highest level that could have spawned here because I tried charming it and was going to throw it at them at the Howling Spectre and just harm shield across but it kept breaking charm. So this was getting pretty rough. I, what I ended up doing is I ended up resting dead that sepulcher spirit right there on the post. And what I'm going to do, basically anything I do at this point is, is, is risk. And here's where the ring of shadow is really going to come in handy or the circlet of shadow. So I'm going to invis. I am going to bank left as hard as I can. Make sure you got, make sure I got invis. <laughs> I'm stuttering because I am extremely nervous because if something goes wrong here, I'm, I'm toast. You know, all my time spent crawling is, is gone away with. So whew, I made it. 
I'm not even worried if it's following me. I just feign death and then wait here for a little bit to make sure that, that Howling Spectre passed back. Feeling pretty good, so I'm going to jump up. And it's nothing's aggro, so I'm going to run through here. And then clear shot, right? Nope. <laughs> if you didn't know it before, there's two golems guarding the teleporter out. So... Yeah, you're not safe yet. You haven't got to freedom yet. There's there's more obstacles. You're, you're not done yet. We'll wait for those golems to reset, though. This can be dealt with, I found out. They're at enough of a distance if you're level 60 and you're standing in the corner. You won't aggro them. So that's good, as long as you're not sitting. Now, if you need to sit just in viz... They don't see invis. I don't think any iteration of these spawns see invis, unless it's a mortiferous protector, which has the possibility to spawn in any mortiferous golems spawn spot. So that happens. I you're just out of luck, which it's it's a sad day. So yeah, I've got to think really critically though about what I'm going to do here because. Once I summon my pet, that's, I mean, that's one of two ways I can resolve this is summon my pet or go try to deal with that specter over there. I wasn't willing to do it because I could figure, I figured out that within reasonable odds, I should be able to summon my uh, lich pet and take down at least one of the golems and then do the other based off of previous fights that I've done. At max, these golems get up to 54, so if I can keep one crowd controlled and burn the other one down, at least I can <clears throat> at least I can get a decent, you know, split on them. I can get them split up because the zone timer is 20 some odd minutes, so and then be able to eventually cycling and ho a howling specter. So, yeah, I, I was at this point, I didn't want to zone out without getting that Howling Spectre. It is on the Artist Solo Challenge. I wanted to be able to get it pulled, to be able to get it slain. It had a Rod of Faith in its hands, which is a pretty nice stinking Paladin mace. It's equivalent, it's equivalent um, attack delay to a Blam Stick with some stats. So yeah, um, some of my pet here, I got them crowd controlled before I summoned it because otherwise you could have done it the other way, but the specter is going to, it's going to pull aggro no matter what. It's level 40, so it's basically, these golems are red to my specter. <laughs> Think about it that way. These golems are red to my specter. The best I can, I just try to dot both of them. CC. And then kind of go from there. So it was definitely a close fight. This was not easy, but it was more preferable to do this than go and yank uh, undead and try to do it and deal with charm breaks with it being like level 53 or 54. Yeah, no thanks on that. I'll just take the proven and tried method. And then, yeah, we had the Howling Spectre. It um, it aggroed. We got pretty close to dying, but fortunately, Fain Death saves the day. Yeah, so, well, some people might say that, well, it's wasted Peridot, but I say that um, better, better the Spectre, better my Spectre pet than me. So, hey, that Peridot could have been a mana skin instead. Think how much I got saved by a pet versus a mana skin. So yeah, if, if I have to ditch an emissary of Thule and spend another Peridot, I'm not worried about it. If you're playing around in dungeons like this and you're worried about Peridots, well, don't be. <laughs> oh, we finally got a Howling Spectre pulled. I don't know how this is going to count if I technically will put this on the solo artist challenge with like assist with pull since Lakos got us here, but 
in any in any regards, we we got here, we got a clean pull on a Howling Spectre. At this point, I I don't know. Is, is this an appropriate place to say "say la vie," or maybe "os la vista, baby"? But we've we've taken down harder mobs. Now this Howling Spectre is level fifty four, so it's. It's no, it's no summer breeze by, by any stretch of the imagination, but we've done harder. It's just a warrior. Hits for about 156. Yeah, we've got this. We've, we've got this in the park. We've, we had the splits done, you know, probably seven minutes after each other. Just pull it in. We've got our pet pulled up. We don't have to deal with any charm break antics. Man, at this point, I was just, oh man, this was, I'm, I'm so pumped to get back here, to get assistance, to get through east, to be able to see east on my, partially on my own with some help. But I've never been here, never ever. So this is a first for me. And we got a great prize for taking this down. I mean, yeah, the, the fight's not done yet, but it is. I mean, look at, look at the Howling Spectres health compared to ours I couldn't lose this it was do or die I told you my adrenaline was pumping and I was thinking like Doctor Strange every possible scenario that I could win and this was the best one I came up with there it is got the rod of faith mm. Woo! we did it yes man what an accomplishment. What a feat. Started on that first faithful day. We zoned in with Harm Shield. We're met by two very mean, very mean greeters who wanted to harm touch us. From there, we explored the entrance in the basement very briefly and ventured our way up through north where we... Went through the halls, explored the different names that spawned there, eventually found a Crypt Keeper. We enacted our feet Adrenaline Rush, took out all the enemies in the North Boss Wing, and eventually the Crypt Keeper. Got our friend a Fagard Perry and Dirk, or something similar. The Key to the West, which we opened west, we had treaded through the halls of the west, and eventually come head to head with the Crypt procurator who we had dropped and got the key to the south from there we had gone south where we had fallen on many troubled times but we persevered and got down many of the name from that area our perseverance brought us many great trinkets and wealths of the sunken city of the built by the kunzar we got a couple of finger bone hoops and shrouded veils Though our travels were looking bleak and about to be stopped short, we got a second and last win and crawled through the never reaches of Charisus through the old corridors leading east, where friendship had flourished with Lakos, who had helped us through insurmountable odds of crawling that last leg. From there, we got to the beautiful, ornate end room of East, and there took down two golems and a howling specter. Ladies and gentlemen, this was a solo dungeon crawl, but not a feat accomplished alone. All of you were here with me in spirit and cheering me on, which I thank you greatly for. Now let's leave this crypt and enjoy like a caterpillar coming out of a cocoon and sprouting wings into a beautiful butterfly. May seem sappy, but I can't think of a better analogy. We got some treasures, we got some experience, but most of all the experience of who we, but not only who we, but most specifically who I became through this process. My ability to play this class has gone up immensely through the trials and tribulations faced in this area. So I wanted to thank you all. 
for coming along with me, even though it is burdened through many parts. Let us rejoice and take joy in what we have accomplished together.